The Dr. Fazzo TV Show is brought to you by POYA, People of Yuma Health Association. The Dr. Fazzo TV Show is intended for health educational purposes only and complies with all the HIPAA regulations. by the CDC guidelines and practicing our social distancing. Uh, thank you, Randy, for having me in, uh, in the show today. Uh, thank you, uh, uh, our wonderful audience, for being uh, with us today in this show. Hi, I'm Jose. I'm Dr. Fozo. So I hear you have a punchline. I hope I'm wrong. What does that mean? Jose, that's a Good question. Uh, so when I was asked to do uh, a discussion with this panel and be uh, part of this presentation today, uh, they asked me what would be your uh, punchline or discussion uh, topic. And I said, I would have want to say, I hope I am wrong. And the reason I said was uh, in regard to the coronavirus pandemic, um, we are not out of the woods yet, and I'm going to explain that as we go further down in this discussion, that um, we have just seen the first uh, wave of uh, coronavirus infection, which have engulfed uh, uh, worldwide uh, society, including uh, in America, and um, has got a lot of mortality. Uh, we just came out of the lockdown and um, you know my concern was or my um, um, my knowledge uh, tells me uh, based on the science that uh, this is uh, just the start we're gonna get a second wave of uh, uh, pandemic again since we stopped uh, uh, we, we came out of the lockdown and uh, I have seen that a lot of people are not following the CDC guidelines, including uh, using the uh, mask and uh, uh, social distancing, uh, which is the key factor in preventing infection. So if we don't do that, then obviously we know we are in June, and by, by, the, by the fall, uh, when the other uh, cold viruses, including flu, uh, kicks in, uh, it will be a uh, bigger issue with bigger health uh, burden on the uh, on the healthcare system, and um, uh, and if on top of that, if there's a mutation in the virus and it become more fatal, the coronavirus epidemic might become uh, might become a lot more serious than what it is or has been in the past. Uh, this is the, based on the facts. And this is based on the historical data from other pandemics in the past. Uh, it is very scary. Uh, so I'm wish, I'm hoping, I'm wishing that I'm wrong on that. I don't want to be uh, right on this one because if I'm right on this one, then we're blocking. Uh, we are looking at a lot of uh, uh, deaths and uh, mortality, and and. Um, there might be another lockdown, and I'm, wish, uh, I'm wishing that I'm wrong on what my prediction is. So I hope that explains uh, my well, question. I, I hope you're wrong too, Dr. Fazel. And uh, as I said, I am hoping that I'm wrong too. But we got to be careful. Uh, we got to be careful. I mean, um, as they say, hope for the best and prepare for the worst. And that's the philo philosophy we have to adapt here. We cannot be sitting ducks this time here. Now we have window of opportunity. We already know what this uh, coronavirus can do and um, and what need to be done. And uh, we should keep practicing, uh, 
you know, wearing mask and social distancing. And uh, I know we need to open the economy, but uh, at the same time, we need to take care of our health and life as well. And uh, uh, both need to go hand in hand. Uh, it can be done very easily. Again, we have to just change our lifestyle a little bit and be more vigilant and just follow the CDC guidelines and we should be fine. And um, if we look at the uh, uh, other uh, pandemic in the past, uh, we always see, see uh, three phase strike. The first phase come in and people change their behavior and then they stop doing what they were doing and then second phase come in and then, then it's, the second phase is generally mostly uh, generally more um, um, serious one and then uh, by that time some treatment would be available or vaccination would be available and then the third phase come in which is slightly less than the second phase and then after that they generally become uh, an endemic or, uh, or, 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 or yearly thing because as the uh, vaccination become available uh, then the cases uh, new cases become less uh, frequent and uh, but then every year the virus do mutate so then you have to have a vaccine every year and eventually it goes away so what I'm seeing is the turbulence in, in the in the next few months uh, maybe in another six month uh, and I think we need to be ready for that as I say we should be embracing for the impact. Dr. Fazo, can you tell us what types of testing there is for the COVID-19 virus and what do they entail? So at this moment, we have two different kinds of tests. One is done through the swab, which can be done through the oral cavity or nasal cavity. It is done through a technology known as uh, RT-PCR, Rose transcriptase uh, uh, polymerase chain reaction mostly done to see if patients have an active infection. Other test is uh, antibody test. We're looking in the blood IgG and IgM. IgG is a chronic antibody and IgM is a new antibody. So if you have those antibodies in the blood, then you mean that you might have infection and as you're, you're already immune to the infection. So IgM means that you have infection now as we speak and IgG means that you've been recovered and you're immune. Both have their own roles. Uh, RT-PCR get available uh, rather quickly and the antibody tests take a little more time. None of those tests are 100% accurate at this time. They have a lot of uh, false negative and false uh, positive test uh, results. So we still have to follow the CDC guidelines for uh, prevention uh, because uh, the tests are still not very reliable. Thank you. And Dr. Fazo, um, this virus, is it different or have you seen any uh, unusual symptoms compared to the cold virus? Okay, so the question from Jose is that is the coronavirus is uh, just like any other cold virus and you just get uh, respiratory sim symptoms or you do also get some other kind of symptoms or does it involve other body parts of the human being? And that's a very good question. So the answer is uh, yes. Um, uh, we have seen uh, lately a very uh, um, different uh, spectrum of uh, symptoms and uh, signs and findings. For example, uh, blood clots in the lungs. And generally, we don't see blood clots in the lungs with other cold virus infection. We do know like this virus attacks lungs and causes breathing issues and sometimes respiratory failure needing use of ventilator. Uh, but I have also seen uh, in my practice and have heard from other doctors too that they have seen uh, in their practices as well that it causes blood clots in the lungs. And I have seen one patient who had uh, no symptoms and suddenly he, you know, end up with very shortness of breath, severe shortness of breath. And uh, when the CAT scan was done, it we found, CT scan was done, we found that he had blood clots all over in the lungs. Now, normally the blood clots uh, happen only if uh, you have a certain pre-existing conditions like prolonged immobilization, prolonged driving, or um, certain kind of uh, medications like uh, contraceptive medications or surgeries uh, that will predispose you to the blood clots. In this case, we are seeing that patients have none of those risk factors and they still end up having blood clots. So uh, we have been very vigilant about that. Uh, this is one of the uh, rarest sim symptoms we have seen with this coronavirus episode. 
also we are seeing other symptoms like we call it COVID toes. Uh, the toes become discolored and of different color. That's not what you see with other the cold viruses. The third one we are seeing is uh, in the children, uh, they are getting heart attacks and something uh, similar to a disease known as Kawasaki disease, uh, which attacks uh, the small blood vessels and causing inflammation, but generally we see in the adults and it causes inflammation. And we are seeing similar kind of situations in children. They get a skin rash, they get uh, very sick, and then they have a certain cardiac death or certain cardiac arrest and then they need a CPR and or maybe breathing machine. Uh, the children are having more condition pertaining to skin rash and, and, and to the heart. Uh, their heart is stopping and they are having heart attacks. Dr. Fossil, I've also heard that there are a couple other symptoms such as the red eyelids and the loss of your smell and your taste. Are those accurate? Wendy, that's a good question. Again, that's uh, true. Um, the people have been seen uh, that they have got they have got red eyes, and some of the patients have got uh, loss of uh, sensation of smell or taste uh, because it does affect the neurological system, and it can cause uh, damage to the cranial nerves, causing uh, those symptoms. Now, the red eye happens because we have found it not only the uh, effect through inhalation of the droplet infection but it can also be affected through the eyes as well so if somebody cough and uh, the droplet infection uh, droplets goes into the eyes of the next person infection can spread through that that as well and and then the patient will have a red eye so that could um, indicate that the the port of entry for the virus was through the eye so that's why we're recommending that not only that we should cover our nose and oral cavities, but also through cover our eyes as well. Thank you, Dr. Fazel. And Dr. Fazel, have you seen any other mode of infection other than the droplets? So the studies have shown that it has, this virus has been seen in uh, other bodily fluid, including semen as well. Technically, it can spread through uh, sexual activity as well. I mean. Uh, we don't know if it is happening, but we have seen that this does exist in the other uh, bodily fluid, including semen. I think precaution is the key at this moment. Dr. Fazel, why are we seeing such an increase in the numbers of the patients infected with the COVID-19 virus? So, when what is happening is now, uh, when we got initial uh, uh, wave of COVID-19 virus in the United States, immediately followed the social uh, guidelines and we had the lockdown and we controlled the plateau or we got the plateau effect on the new cases. And the reason we did it was to uh, decompress the healthcare system. As the lockdown has been lifted, uh, people are going back to their normal lives. And unfortunately, some of us are not following the social guidance and CDC guidance. And they have not got infection in the first phase and now they're getting infected in the second phase because they are not immune and there's no vaccine available as we know that. I would say this is uh, a little bit careless behavior on, on their side and they should be using the CDC guidelines which is uh, social distancing, uh, hygiene, sterilization and um, the wearing of the mask. Thank you. And Dr. Fazo, what is the single most important thing in preventing this infection if you have to pick one? So the studies have shown that a uh, single most uh, step to prevention of this infection is uh, the mask. We have found that using the mask can prevent alone 70% of the infection alone. So the mask is the key factor. All right, thank you. Dr. Fazel, how soon do you think a vaccination will be available for the public? So Wendy, the vaccine is still in the trial phase. There are different companies we are they are trying uh, at the same time to make vaccine. Uh, unlike treatment, which can be given to uh, sick patients, the vaccine has to be given to healthy people. So there's a lot of uh, uh, trials need to be done uh, because we want to make sure that the healthy people don't get sick from the inaccurate vaccine or uh, or a bad vaccine. So uh, typically it take many years, but since we are in a, a situation where we don't have too much time, uh, I 
think with all the global efforts together, we'll probably be able to get a vaccine within the next one year. And that's on the good side. If everything goes right, if we don't make any mistakes, if everything works out in the first time, the earliest vaccine we can get is one year from today. Thank you. Dr. Fazal, are you available to take some questions from our audience? Uh, Wendy, definitely we are available to take questions from the audience, so let's open up the panel for questions and see if you have some questions. Thank you. Dr. Fazal, we have a question from Karen in our audience, and she would like to know at what point should she be concerned and go get tested for the COVID-19? So the current uh, question would be uh, for testing would be if you have symptoms and you think you've been exposed to uh, COVID-19 patient, uh, high risk patient. For example, if you have cough, um, runny nose, or if you have uh, high grade fever, shortness of breath, uh, then you should be tested. Or if you think you have been exposed to a positive patient uh, who has COVID-19 uh, already positive and you've been in uh, contact, uh, then uh, if you want to test yourself that you didn't get infection, that would be the only two situations where I would recommend to get tested. I would not test, I would not recommend for testing for everybody who have no symptoms because it will overwhelm our health care system and those patients who really, those people who need, really deserve the test, they will not get opportunity to get tested. Dr. Fazza, we have a question from Jose in the audience. He would like to know if you have tested positive for the COVID-19, who all should you notify? So if you're uh, tested positive for COVID-19, you should notify any of your close contact in the last two weeks. We all know that the incubation period is two weeks. That means by the time you get the infection and by the time you get symptoms, it is, takes two weeks. So anybody in the last two weeks since you got the symptoms and got positive tests, uh, you should notify them so they can get tested as well because you can transmit infection even though you don't have symptoms in the two weeks prior to getting symptoms. That's all the questions we have for today. Thank you so much for being with us for this edition of the Dr. Fossil Show and stay tuned for next month's edition of the July 2020 discussion on the COVID-19. Thank you uh, so much for having me today and thank you Wendy and Jose for being with us today for this episode of uh, Dr. Fazal TV show and thank you so much for the audience for being us today and asking those very important questions. Please stay safe, uh, please follow the social uh, guidance and uh, CDC guideline, guidance. Uh, God bless you, God bless all of us and God bless America.